again, Charlie, I think this this game was probably the least impressive that we've seen from the U.S. women at this point. They've been really strong in the Olympics so far. But um, for you, sometimes grinding out a win, just finding a way, um, you have to do it in competitions like this. So what was your initial reaction to the U.S.'s performance in this one? Well, one, I knew that Japan were going to be extremely difficult to break down. This is a team that is superior in terms of counterattacking and defend organized defending. They wait for that perfect moment, they trap you, and then they look to, to really punish you. I thought the U.S. did a very good job of being patient in the buildup. Mm -hmm. Although, when they got to the attacking third, you saw a real lack of ideas and creativity and, and then lack of execution, right? So for, I think from that standpoint, you say, okay, you didn't make any big mistakes because that's where Japan really punishes you. But I was a, re a little underwhelmed in terms of, you know, this front three is, is, could have the potential to be the greatest front three ever for, for the U.S. Women's National Team. Um, just when you see Trinity Rodman, She's still raw. Yep. She still has so much to grow, which is scary how good she could be. Um, and, you know, you could see that she was trying to plug away, plug away, but it's very difficult when teams are bunkering down and they're very organized. You have to combine. There's got to be a lot of quick one touch, two touch, sharp movements in and around the box to break it down. We didn't see that so much, but they stuck with it. And yeah. Emma Hayes believes in this group. She, she's very, um, I think she's late with substitutions. I was just going to say, what did you make sticks, of that? Because she, she didn't make a sub group. until extra time. It, yeah, that was she had crazy. Six subs to do in extra time. And, and you can't fault if they win the games, right? You right. can. And they one, did look a little player, gassed, though. One player that you would sub is Trini Rodman in that game. Because I saw, I said, mm, she doesn't have it today. Mm -hmm. She showed up. The one thing I like about Emma time. Hayes is she very clearly trusts or is seeing how much she can trust her players to make decisions throughout the match. In particular, that Trinity Rodman goal, the play before, she receives a similar pass, lays it off, and the, the pass ends up going nowhere. And you could see Switch came out. She's like, all right, I'm going to have to do this myself. Gets the same pass from uh, Crystal Dunn, an incredible pass, incredible touch, eyes down her defender and become so incisive. It's just, what a perfect switch up from the previous to be like, let me help get my, my, my teammates involved, to be like, all right, maybe today I gotta do this one I, I wanna well. ask you a question, because you know we got to watch the, the US Women's National Team in the, in the World Cup, right, and where they really faltered, and yeah. not only in the attacking third, but just the, way, the style of play. But when you see Crystal Dunn as a left back, and you see uh, Sonnet as a center back, and you see how Corbin Albert and Lindsey Horan are maybe a little bit deeper at, at times. How do you think that this style benefits this group with, with Emma Hayes as opposed to Vlako Adonofsky in, in that prior group? I feel like Vlako is getting much more out of the players on the field. This was obviously an official competition. Out of the four games that we've seen from the U.S., you can have one of these games, and this is when the most question marks were around Emma Hayes because there weren't that many solutions. Whereas in the other games, you saw three different facets of play against three different opponents, and they managed to resolve situations pretty well and without any worry. Not that they were worried against Japan. They had control first half, and then when it got into extra time, you know, energy levels drop, you get a bit unorganized. The U.S. suffered a bit, but they found a solution at the very end. In Spanish, you say... It was a goal from another game, like completely out of context. Like Trinity, ball over the top. Trinity Rodman did something unbelievable, something that she didn't do all game long, save for that moment, and and figured it out. And hopefully, this is an anomaly to the rest of the tournament, and that the U.S. grows and learns from this. Um, and that's where I see that that he's, uh, excuse me, Emma Hayes is getting something that Vlatko is getting, is the mobility from the front three, but I think this game hopefully is that anomaly. I'm just worried about the recovery for the next is game. Is it the tired legs, maybe? Because it seemed to me like they were a bit more lethargic, especially with Japan sitting so yeah. deep. I, I think it was, it's more of the opponent. So, in terms of the opponent's left, when Germany can, doesn't play like Japan, Spain doesn't play like Japan, so when you're looking at a group who is 
very tactically sound and, and doesn't give you much space and sits back and counters with the ferocity that Japan does, I think it makes it look like it can be lethargic mm -hmm. if you're not playing quick and moving off the ball. Yeah, because to me, it was just a lot of Emily Sonnet and Gurma just constantly passing back and forth. Can we give a shout-out to Naomi Gurma, Oh, by the incredible. Way. I feel like we don't talk about her enough and her defensive strength and just how mm -hmm. steady and solid she is at that back. She covers so much ground. She's and the best I, center back in the world. 100%. She's, she's the Virgil van Dijk of the women's game for me, and I just think that it's <laughs> important to recognize the mm. amount of work that she does and how important she is. I would say Cuti Romero, but wow. sure. Okay. What are the odds? Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, but when you think about what Japan were able to do and how they were able to thwart that, that front three, because they had produced, I mean, I think we had nine goals heading into this match against Japan for them to only have the one goal from, from Trinity Rodman. Is Germany looking at what Japan did and taking notes and being like, this is how we we stop them. Or do you see the U.S. being able to bounce back in that front three, Charlie? Uh, no, <clears throat> I, I see Germany saying, all right, there there are some positives in the way that Germany played, mm -hmm. uh, Japan played rather, but they're going to play their game, and they've already had a, a run through. It's very difficult to beat an opponent twice in the same tournament, especially now we're talking about a semifinal round. Especially in that manner, right? The way yes. that the U.S. I, I didn't think so, that the score reflected the 4-0 from group stage reflected what we saw in the actual pitch. The U.S. had moments where they could have conceded, but they figured it out. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be easy as it was that first game. That's, that's for sure. No. Uh, I, but I don't see Germany saying, scrap the way that we have been playing, and mm -hmm. now we're just going to do exactly what Japan does, because that's not their game. Yeah, I think Germany had opportunities that were missed in that game, but just looking at Julia Gavin, who's one of their better players, especially with Lena Oberdorf not being in there, who I think stops so many of the oncoming attacks, uh, she needs to get forward in order to be effective, which takes a, it takes a full back out of the scheme, leaves you with a back three. We saw Rose Lavelle getting forward in the last match a lot more, almost making a front four at times in the attack. If that's the case, if they're going to do that again, it's going to put a lot of pressure on this Germany back line once again. Not easy to beat a team for a second time, but... Kind of may fall into our hands a little bit the way they want to play. Uh, how much do you think they miss Sam Coffey, who missed the Japan match due to a yellow card in the I, 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 I don't know why people think that Sam Coffey was like the biggest difference maker for this team because I thought Corbin Albert, I know Sam Coffey's important to this team. I know she's good, but I thought Corbin Albert did a good job in this game. I thought she was pretty sound in the way that she played and connected passes and broke out of the midfield, but you know what you got from, get from Sam, Sam Coffey is just being so stable and consistent, breaking up plays and keeping the ball moving. So um, she will be a, a pleasant addition, plus she'll be, have fresh legs. Fresh, fresh legs. Which is, that, yeah. which is massive. I'm, I'm most concerned. If, if this was a one-off game in, in a void, I would be very, very confident, given the way that the U.S. is playing. Mm. Well, given the way means that it's not in a void anymore, but whatever, you guys get what I mean. <laughs> um the physical component of it. There was a grueling 120 minutes for the US on, on, on no subs. Emma Hayes didn't sub anybody. She, Emma Hayes had six subs. She could mm -hmm. change the majority of the team going into extra time, which is wild. Now it's, does she believe in the group enough to make a number of rotations for this next semifinal? Yes, they've beaten them 4-0. You, you can't take them lightly now. Yeah. So I think, you're going to have to naturally make some changes yeah. because of fresh legs. In the, in the past, she's Ooh. quoted as saying consistency in lineups is what wins championships. Mm -hmm. So I'm expecting that there won't be that many changes, but I'm expecting Sam Coffey to be back two? in. I think Sam Coffey's a bruiser. Mm -hmm. and, and in that case, that little bit of a difference, while I agree with you, Corbin Albert had a good game, yeah. I think that little bit of extra defensive prowess she, that Sam Coffey offers is it settles the defense so much more where I don't think they got tested so much in this I'll game. I'll put 50 yes. bucks on the lineup. Ready? Whoa. I'll put 50 bucks on it. Who okay. wants to, who wants to take it? This betting segment has turned us into <laughs> Who wants to no, take it? No, give me your 50. Okay. Okay. You got to tell us what it is. Yeah, you got to tell me your lineup first. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be Nair, Fox, Germa, Sonnet, Dunn, Coffee, Lavelle, Haran, Rodman, Swanson, Smith. That's going to be 11. So there's only one change. One so. change. That's it. The Sam Coffee for Corbin Albert. Judging by the way Emma Hayes has taken this tournament by the horns, like... No messing around, no experiments. That's her best team at, this uh, at the moment. Are you settled on that? That's your 50 11? bucks. Huh? 
You're settled on that? That's yeah, right. I'll take I'll take 50 bucks right now. All right. Yeah? Ooh. I'll shake on it. I like that. I'll take 50 bucks on it right now. Okay. Yeah. I feel it. Oh, okay. Not the Reaper chip? Godspeed, Alexis. <laughs> <laughs>